how about flying cars? Do you think that is something we'll see in the next 20, 25 years? It's going to be the, the next form of transportation that really takes off, no pun intended, in a way that people can't even imagine. For over a century, we've dreamed of cars taking to the skies. And now that dream is closer than ever. By 2030, the flying car market could be worth over 1.5 trillion. That's nearly half the size of today's global car industry. With EV tolls promising silent, autonomous, and ultra-efficient travel, a two-hour commute could shrink to just 10 minutes without a single traffic jam. Welcome to the Mind Blowers podcast, where we explore the technologies shaping our future. Today, Aptera CEO Steve Fambro joins Daniel Kafer, author, futurist, and your host, to discuss how sustainable tech and AI are unlocking the era of personal air travel. How about flying cars? Do you think that is something we'll see in the next 20, 25 years? Um, now you've talked about something that's really interesting. Uh, of course, Aptera and, and solar vehicles are, you know, my life. Uh, but I'm also a pilot. And I, um, I'm aware, very aware of what's happening in the EV tall space and the electric aviation space. And um, uh, we were at DriftX in Abu Dhabi a few months ago where I saw a lot of these and some of them on display, these, these full size sort of quadcopter looking vehicles. Um, I think this is a fascinating part of the future. I'm, I'm really excited about this because it, it's not like, I mean, these things are super quiet. So it's not like a helicopter landing in your backyard. They are whisper quiet and they're electric. So there are no emissions and they can whisk you, you know, over the traffic. And if you've ever been in a helicopter before, uh, it, like my former boss, when I worked, uh, in the middle East, uh, he brought me with him to go look at tea plantations in Sri Lanka. And the first trip we were in the car for 16 hours getting bounced around, you know, on these roads that are really just for tuk-tuks. The second trip you rented a helicopter <laughs> and, uh, and, and just the, the, like the magic of being able to fly over the pro, you know, traffic and potholes and everything and people, um, I think that's going to be intoxicating and it'll be more affordable because it's electric the operating cost will be a fraction of a helicopter. You know, helicopters don't want to fly. They, they just want to come apart. And so they require extraordinary levels of maintenance and cost to keep them from coming apart. The electric quadcopters are different. Uh, they, they have one moving part, you know, or a few moving parts, um, and they're quiet and, it's just, I think it's, it's going to be the, the next form of transportation that really takes off, no pun intended, in a way that people can't even imagine. I'm, I'm very excited for it. And when do you I see this, really when do you see this happening at, at scale? So it's, it's like a real choice. Like, should we take the, uh, flying car as, uh, you know, instead of a taxi? Uh, when do you think that is, is a real sh choice for consumers? Let's just, again, you know, answer it for the West Coast of the U.S. I, I wonder if the United States, this is somewhere, this is an area where we will lag, I think, because of regulations. Uh, so you have Chinese companies who are very mature in this process, and, and you have Chinese and American and other companies operating in places like the UAE, where they're getting uh, already their flight certificates and, and permission essentially to operate as a business. So I think you will see it in those places first because they have a more, their government is actively trying to encourage those things as opposed to regulators finding reasons why you can't do it. All right, so in the U.S., I'd say it depends on the regulatory tolerance, which is very difficult to predict. Um, and maybe it's something at a state level. So maybe it won't be California. Maybe it'll be Texas. Uh, you know, Elon moved there because it was easier to launch rockets from Texas than California or Florida. Maybe that's where these companies will, will gain traction first. And I think once people see it operating, then you'll see other state and local governments say, okay, yes, we'll, we'll let it operate. I mean, the FAA is going to control everything. I would not underestimate the amount of red tape and roadblocks that a state or even a city could, could put in place of something like this just because they don't understand it or they're scared of it. So you might see it first in somewhere with like a more permissive uh, government, I'd say like Texas, uh, I, I would say within the decade.
within the decade, you'll, you will see commercial EV toll service in the United States. Now, is it Uber or is it just to take you to your United flight? You know, if you're a first class passenger, maybe it picks you up somewhere. I, I don't know how it will manifest first, but I definitely think within the decade. Do you, do you think it's possible to keep the costs reasonable or do you think it will be a premium option? Long term, like the, if you look at the asymptote, I think of costs, I think there's there's no reason why the operating cost would not be much less, like fa- maybe a factor of five or 10 less than a helicopter because it's electricity and maintenance really. You know, the pilot is almost inconsequential. Because the real cost of a helicopter is maintenance, you know, in addition to fuel. I'm by nature of these electric ve- air vehicles uh, design. I don't believe there will be the same level of maintenance required. Um, and so I think it has the potential for being much cheaper than a helicopter. So let's say I wanted to charter a helicopter today. It might be around a thousand dollars an hour. So maybe this might be two hundred dollars an hour. Something like that. Now, even for if you're splitting it for four people, then that becomes quite attractive. You know, fifty dollars an hour—that's like a taxi. It's cheaper than a taxi. You drive a taxi an hour, you're going to spend a couple hundred dollars. So, I think it has a potential for being maybe in the same order of magnitude as a taxi versus a chartered aircraft. Well, these were the final words from Steve Fambro, the CEO of Aptera on flying cars, but we're not leaving you quite yet. We wanted to provide you with some more exciting information on flying cars right here on Mind Blowers. For over a century, the vision of personal flight has captivated our imaginations. Today, that vision is transforming into reality with the advent of electric flying cars or eVTOLs, electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, poised to revolutionize urban mobility. At the forefront of this aerial revolution are pioneering companies dedicated to making air taxis a part of daily life. Joby Aviation has spent over 15 years developing a four-passenger eVTOL capable of speeds up to 200 miles per hour with a range of 100 miles. With backing from Toyota and Delta Airlines, Joby is set to begin commercial operations by the end of 2025 starting in Dubai. Archer Aviation, based in San Jose, California, is building the Midnight EV Toll, designed for short urban flights. They've secured a $1 billion order from United Airlines, aiming for service in major US cities by 2025. Volocopter, a German innovator, is focusing on inner city air taxis and has already conducted numerous test flights in Europe and Asia. Imagine a flying car that fits in your garage, takes off vertically, and cruises at 200 mph, all electric, zero emissions. Meet the LEO Coupe, the groundbreaking eVTOL from Leo Flight Corporation. Designed for personal air travel, this futuristic three-passenger aircraft boasts a 250-mile range and cutting-edge electric jet technology. With its sleek, galling doors and compact design, Leo is bringing flying cars from science fiction to reality. The future of personal flight is here and it's taking off faster than you think. Pricing and affordability. Right now, eVTOLs are expensive with costs around $1 million per unit. But as production scales, prices are expected to drop significantly by 2030, making them much more accessible. Electric vertical takeoff and landing vehicles, or eVTOLs, are rapidly advancing in technology and production, making them more accessible than ever before. While early models were expensive, the landscape is changing quickly. The AR1, a personal eVTOL, is priced at approximately $150,000 and offers a range of about 110 miles on a full charge. The Jetson 1, designed as a single-seat, ultralight vehicle, is available for $98,000 and does not require a pilot's license in the US. Meanwhile, the Ehang EH 216S, a fully autonomous two-passenger EV toll, is expected to retail for less than $350,000 in China. 
Compared to traditional helicopters, which can range anywhere from $300,000 to several million, depending on the model, eVTOLs are becoming a competitive alternative. As the technology advances in production scales, the cost for passengers is also expected to drop. While early flights may cost around $5.70 per passenger mile in 2025, analysts predict that by 2030, that number could fall to approximately 44 cents per mile, making air taxis more affordable than some traditional ride-sharing services. Another key advantage of eVTOLs over helicopters is their noise, or rather the lack of it. Traditional helicopters generate around 80 to 100 decibels of noise, comparable to a motorcycle at full throttle. In contrast, eVTOLs operate at approximately 55 to 75 decibels, making them as quiet as a normal conversation. This significant reduction in noise pollution makes them far more suitable for urban environments, allowing them to blend into city life without disruption. So when will we actually see flying cars becoming mainstream? The first major milestone is expected in 2025, when commercial air taxi services are set to launch in cities like Dubai, Los Angeles and New York City. By 2028, infrastructure is expected to expand significantly, with more than 1,000 vertiports, specialized takeoff and landing areas, expected to be operational worldwide. By 2030, China plans to have 100,000 flying cars in daily operation, serving as taxis, delivery vehicles and personal commuter aircraft. Some of the first cities preparing for eVTOL services include Dubai, which aims to have flying taxis operational by late 2025, positioning itself as a leader in futuristic transport. In the US, New York City is working with Archer Aviation and United Airlines to introduce air taxis connecting major airports to Manhattan. Los Angeles is also preparing for urban air mobility with the development of vertiports. Meanwhile, European cities such as London and Paris are investing in air taxi networks, with test flights already conducted in Paris ahead of major events like the 2024 Olympics. With advancing technology and growing infrastructure, eVTOLs are set to redefine urban transportation. The dream of flying cars is no longer science fiction, it's a reality taking off in the next few years.